Welcome to the first Sunday of Lent here at St. Francis of Assisi Parish. And so we begin by asking the Lord for his forgiveness by singing. Te pani kichi ke on kiki maka nichi ke. Christos kiki maka nichi ke. Te pani kichi ke on kiki maka nichi ke. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that through the yearly observance of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during these days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, Man does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord God, and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, and for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone." Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. How many of us Roman Catholics look upon the season of Lent as historically as a time of sackcloth and ashes, doing penance and giving up things? I guess wearing sackcloth and ashes, doing penance and giving up things are all good Lenten disciplines if they truly lead us to metanoia or a change of heart. If they truly lead us to a sense of repentance and conversion. Doing penance by giving up things is good. If it leads us from staring at our belly buttons, if it leads us away from self-indulgence or self-pity or self-focus, it helps us to journey more closely to the heart of our God. The danger is becoming overly absorbed in wearing sackcloth and ashes and doing penance by giving up things is being deluded into believing that by doing these holy, pious, and religious things and acts, we are somehow paying God back for our sinful choices in life. 
We are deluding ourselves if we think we can ever pay God back for suffering, dying, and rising for us. People by nature like a philosophy of even Stevens or a balanced teeter-totter. We do not want to be beholding to someone else. We feel better when our debts are paid off. The bottom line is that as we walk into Lent, we want to avoid doing good religious things for the wrong reason. Perhaps we would be better off this year by focusing on Lent as a season of mucho gracias. Mucho gracias is a Spanish word for thank you very much. Fundamentally, the season of Lent is about the Church inviting us into a time, place, and space of giving glory and honor, thanksgiving, and praise to God for all He has given to us. It's about thanking God for all the blessings that He has bestowed upon us in life. Religious brother and psychologist, Brother David Steidler Reist, says, We will never balance the scales with God, no matter how long we live. If we listen closely to the first reading, we will realize that God does not expect us to balance the scales. Our first reading from Deuteronomy tells us God's saving story and the gratitude of the people of Israel. God liberated the Israelites from bondage in Egypt. Israel's gift to God was the first fruits of the soil to express gratitude and thanksgiving. Moses is telling his people that salvation is pure gift. Salvation is not a reward earned. Basic is, basically, his message is that we are a people whose hearts cry out to God again and again, Mucho gracias. Lent calls us to be a people with a keen awareness of the grace and graciousness of God as revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Our second reading today highlights the central role Jesus played in our salvation. Paul argues that it is not good works alone that will save us, but our faith and our openness to God. Paul is pleading with his contemporaries to rethink their understanding of salvation. Paul tells us that God's mercy has no limits in terms of numbers, nor in terms of geography. God's care and compassion is boundless. The gospel reveals Jesus' glory, even in the face of suffering. We see God as a God for us. We recognize Jesus as the compassion of God. Only our response is to live lives of mucho gracias. The story of Jesus' temptations in the deserts parallels our own life situation as we strive to be faithful to God. The temptations Jesus underwent were to escape from his human condition, a failure to realize that as humans we are already made in God's image and likeness. Father Michael Himes says that the Jesus we proclaim as Savior is the same Jesus who was tempted as we are. When Jesus enters into the desert to pray and fast, he experiences what it means to be fully human. To be human is to be wonderfully made, to be made in God's own image and likeness. But our human nature can tempt us to ignore and forget these truths and to strive for becoming something much less than we are, to be less than wonderful, to be less than godlike. Jesus, like ourselves, was tempted to be less than he, and his temptations were not unlike those that confront us. 
Jesus, in his response to his tempter, always defers to the power of God. It is not by bread alone. Worship only God. Do not put God to the test. In a real sense, these temptations are a reminder that the fundamental temptation on the one hand is to deny human limitations. On the other hand, the fundamental temptation is to deny our incredible goodness, fashioned as we are in God's image. Let us a time to remember that we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But at the same time, we must never forget that we are made a little less than the angels, and in the eyes of God, we are beautiful, we are wonderful, and we are lovable. And so it is that as we seek to enter into Lent this year in a new way, we seek to enter through a new lens, a new set of eyes in order to grow closer to God and allow God to grow closer to us. We seek to focus not so much on doing penance nor wearing sackcloth and ashes, but rather to seek discipline of our minds, our hearts, souls, and bodies, and to become even more grateful to God for his bountiful love and bountiful blessings. Our God is a God who is closer to us than we are to ourselves. When we demonstrate our gratitude to God, the scales fall down from our eyes, and we see more clearly our hearts melt to become hearts of flesh rather than hearts of stone. And our spirit is free to cry out for all that has been, Lord. Mucho gracias. For all that is, Lord. Mucho gracias. For all that will be, Lord. Mucho gracias. Praise be Jesus risen. Amen.